since the, there is no ego apart from our own mind, that even when you start to, to pick up so-called negativity or whatever, that still the lesson is our own lesson. And that the more we're able to recognize the ego, you just are able to say, ah, oh, it's the imposter. And little by little, that, that's why you can be defenseless literally anywhere, because you don't start to think of the negativity as somehow being outside you, of people, you know, thinking things about you or doing things about you. You recognize that there's just the ego is the ego. And when you start to recognize the content of the ego and that it's not true, you know, it's not created by God, then that helps get a real detachment without getting into all the, the analyzing of, well, your ego and my ego and the collective ego and la, 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 la. Just, you know, recognizing the false is the false and, and not uh, buying the bait. The more, I think when we go with the spirit, the more and more you start to see that, that um, the unreality of those thoughts that way, the mind starts to detach from them, and therefore the, the guilt leaves. Because it's only the mind's investment that these are real thoughts. You know, the mind gets so invested in these thoughts as being real, that that's where the guilt comes from. It's one thing, for example, to say, boy, am I invested in this body, and boy, am I invested in my, my house and my car and the form things around me, you know. But, but when you think about it, how invested at those private thoughts that seem to be just whirling through there, that seem to be like a private world in there, you know, that here comes the course along and, and it's, it's saying, you know, there aren't, there aren't <coughs> private thoughts, there aren't private minds, that every thought you have kind of goes into the constellation of the whole sonship. And that's why it's been so important to discern between these thoughts and to let go the false thoughts. Because you literally re release the entire sonship when you're able to, to do that. It's a full-time job to keep track of your your own state of mind and your own emotions, you know. Let alone trying let to alone with everybody help else. Figure out yeah, else yeah, it really is. A, it's such a full-time job because literally that's a belief in the mind that the mind doesn't believe that it's that it's worthy enough to watch the mind that that closely. So what you're saying is like when Cindy or I would see someone that's in that fearful state like that, it's our own lesson. Yeah, first, first of all, is how do I feel about it? You know, am I, am I really at peace, or am I starting to, like we talked earlier, get buy pulled in, in or buy in? Because the first thing is to, to come back to a centered, peaceful place, and then from that peaceful place to that place of relaxation, there may be a, a behavioral component to the miracle. The main thing is to, to be miracle-minded, or to be in your right mind, to be free of the fear in whatever form, and then from that place, there may be. In other words, the spirit may work through you. It may just be a smile. I mean, it may be metaphysically that, that they can't hear some of these ideas that we're talking about. And it could be just a smile, or it could be a, a, a pat on the back or a hug. But, but in any event, or it could even be a word or two of encouragement, but, but the spirit will automatically, when we step aside, will come through us. And it will be the most natural, comfortable thing. You know, it will just be like an outpicturing or a flowing through. But our main responsibility is to, to just be absolved of fear and to, to be in our right mind. In other words, miracles can't be worked through us while we're in a state of fear. Right, and, you know, and it, it was hard for me. You know, I just wanted to say a couple simple things. Yeah. And then part of me wanted to, like, move into judgment then, which is real hard for me, you know, a lot of times, especially when I'm dealing with something that I was, you know, caught up in, you know. Catholic, right? Yeah, <laughs> the Catholic issue. If we go into that a little bit deeper, too, like, like, for instance, even the, the Catholic idea, and the, you know, the, the Beverly was in the convent for nine years, and, and a lot of times when I go Catholic. around, people will say, you know, <laughs> oh, boy, I'm a recovering Catholic, and I've gone, this is heavy ingrained in this and that, as if, you know, it's like, and this all this Jesus stuff, and I've got to unlearn this and that. But I think, I think for me, the pulse being here, I guess, is, you know, kind of like, you know. Were you raised Catholic? Oh, yeah. I'm just trying to take it up to, to the next notch right. in the sense yeah. that, that, you know, as we travel around in the semi course groups, they'll tell me the Catholic horror stories, even with nuns hitting them over, you know, the fingers and this and that. Yeah, but, but remember, yeah. what the course does is he sim <laughs> Jesus simplifies it all, and he says, basically, you know, it's the ego thought system. That the way that Jesus describes it is you're a mind, and when you believe in the belief in separation, you have a lot of guilt in the mind. 
And therefore, if we just take it from that level, forgetting about upbringing and background yet, we'll leave the world out of it for a second. We'll just talk about, like, the mind. The mind that believes it's guilty, you know, that's the problem. And therefore, it will automatically call forth witnesses from the world that will reinforce the guilt that it already believes in. In other words, no one comes to this world like a blank slate. A lot of times it sounds kind of romantic, the idea of little kids coming in and they've got such cute little eyes and they have done nothing wrong and then the, the, the parents and the society and the world messes them up. And Jesus is kind of going, no, 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 no. It's not, it's not that at all. In the sense, then the child would be a victim of the environment and the parents and the upbringing and the Catholic Church or whatever. And we're still back into that victimhood thinking. Jesus is saying that the mind that believes in separation and feels guilty will call forth witnesses. It may seem to be I'm a person in the world and I'm, I'm confined in Catholicism, or maybe I'm abused as a child or neglected, or you know maybe I grew up in an orphanage, or you know maybe I'm you know it could be one of anything. But basically, the mind will call forth and interpret what it sees, you know, as as limiting it, as um, like a lot of people say, I can't stand all this st stuff in the Catholic religion about sacrifice. The ego is the belief in sacrifice. The Catholic Church, so to speak, and all of the, the experiences that happened in there were just the witnesses to what's already in the mind. The mind has to believe in sacrifice before it can see sacrifice in the world. So, you can see where what we're doing is like, people will say, but, but I've come a long way. I, I used to be in the Catholic Church, and then I kind of worked over to Unity, and now I'm in the Course in Miracles, and this and that, and I've gone from believing this vengeful God that's going you know, to get everybody to, I've come to the realization that God is love. And then they go home and, <laughs> you know, oh, have they come to the, have we come to the realization that God is love, you know? You see how the mind can, can do a little mind that's game. That's what I'm saying, you know, it's being raised and, and not feeling the same way, and yet I don't want to be into yes. Catholic bashing. You know? Right. <laughs> I mean, you know? <laughs> right. And you can see that's where... That's what you want. I mean... Yeah. That's the ego would like to pawn it off on yeah. the Catholic yeah. Church somehow, or the yeah. Catholic nuns or something or other. And you can you can see the stay at the Lord thing. You can see the backward thinking again, because if it was the Catholic Church that taught me these beliefs that are giving me so much problem now, then... The Catholic Church would be the victimizer. They would be the one. Basically, the Course says that your mind, you know, the Catholic Church taught me what I wanted it to teach me, is a better way of saying it. You know, that if from a mind level, if I, if I believe in guilt, then I'll perceive that the world is teaching me, my parents, the Catholic Church, or whatever, what I wanted it to teach me. So you see, the Catholic Church is absolved then. You know, it's like, okay, here we go. It's back to resp my responsibility, my mind, my guilt that I believe in. And all Jesus is doing is saying, you know, this is this is what's going on. You you plugged into a fear-based thought system, and you have a lot of deep, very guilt, but your guilt is is not real. I mean, that's not who you really are. That you don't have any real reason to feel guilt. Guilt is not justified. And then the more you start to to open up to the Holy Spirit, you're going to see how silly and ridiculous this game of guilt and fear is. And, you know, you just come to a point where you can accept total responsibility for the ego at that point without trying to project the blame for it anywhere else. And you bring it all the way back to, I made this thing, and it is this that I have done, and it is this that I would undo. Then the Holy Spirit, when you bring the cause back to the mind, then the Holy Spirit can will shine it away. But it doesn't get shown away when it gets projected. That's how it, it kind of stays reinforced. Good news. Can you say a little bit about backward forward thought? I know we mentioned it either yesterday, either last night or this morning, but yeah. I think that's real helpful. We started to get into it when we, earlier today when we started talking about cause and effect where, you know, God is the, is the cause of the source and the sun is the effect. Now what happens when this when this, this mad idea of separation is not laughed at and is taken seriously is that cause and effect are split off. In other words, that in heaven cause and effect are simultaneous. The Father and the Son are one. They sing a song of eternal joy and gratefulness to one another. Even though 
you know, you may say one's the Father and one's the Son. It's like they're just one. They're so mixed in together because they're one of one will that there's there's really no point where the Son leaves off and the Father begins. You know, it's just. But but to the ego's way of thinking, when the, when the belief in separation is taken serious, cause and effect get split off and turned around. So in other words, um, split off from heaven. You know, like heaven now is not in the picture, but they've been split off and turned around so that now my my mind, my state of mind is the effect, and the world and the ego system is seen as causative. So that's why it seems like all the events that happen in the world have the power to take our peace of mind away. You know, somebody c seems to cut us off on the highway, or you know, somebody seems to steal something from us, or leave us, or, you know... Um, say something to us that, that we don't like, or, you know, say one thing and do another, or whatever. It's, the causes always seem to be on the script or on the screen. And basically how this happens, if we get to the metaphysics, is that, that the mind believed is separated, and, and that started this secret dream. And this is the unconscious, this is a secret dream that we have going on that, that the mind believes is terribly guilty for separating from God. But that's too horrifying, so that gets jammed down. And now the dreaming of the world comes, which is basically, the world comes from this secret dream. But the dreaming of the world is like the way that the mind tries to, it's like a giant smoke screen or a like giant hiding distracted device that keeps the mind distracted away from this very, very deep feelings of unworthiness and guilt, you know, like separating off from God. So the mind gets distracted. But the only thing about this dream is that now it seems like the mind believes it's in the dream, it's a little dream figure, and it believes that it's at the mercy of all these things that are happening. So that once again, cause and effect has been split off and turned around. So in other words, this is the first part of the secret dream in the mind, which it doesn't want to see, and then the second part is the surface level in which um, things seem to be happening to me completely without my will, without me having anything to do with it. You might hear teenage children say, I didn't ask to be born into this world, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, in so anger to their parents. Statement, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yeah. it's kind of like to their parents, I didn't ask for any of this, you know. Or, you know, you can say it about families, you know, why was I born into that family? You know, if I had my choice, I would have picked another family, or that school, or that Catholic church, or why in this country? You know, why couldn't I have been born in, you know, Australia? <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, you know, into royalty in England, or something, you know, or something like that. But basically, the underlying thing is, I didn't ask for this. Like, hey, I didn't ask to be here. I didn't ask for to be mistreated by my parents in that case, and I didn't ask to be... Um, Burnt to be abused here, and I didn't ask for when my when I was in the seventh grade, and my teacher embarrassed me by making me put my nose on the, in the chalk hole on, on the, the board. You know all these kind of memories of you know I didn't ask for that. You know that was humiliating, that was disgusting. That the dream world basically is it seems like all these events happen to me, and I have no say in what happens. To and the mind has just completely forgotten that the whole dream world was made off of this, um, the underpinnings of the dream world are, are off of this guilt that's very deep within the mind. So that's why it's important to start to pull back from all of this distractions and the busyness and to go within and to get in touch with the beliefs that are holding up this dream world. Because if you can get down, it's, it's kind of like if you go to a, a stage play, you know, and they've got this beautiful set, you know, for the Broadway stage play, and you go around behind the set, and it's got all these wood supports, support, you know. Jesus is kind of saying, don't get too caught up in how nice the, you know, the stage, the backdrop looks. you got to come around behind and get to the support. <laughs> and literally, when you, if we look at these supports, we'll take the supports down, your the world will... <laughs> you know, will not seem to be so big and horrible. It'll, it'll just seem to be what it is. It's just you know, images. So that these underpinnings literally make the world. And it's no point trying to change the, the backdrop. But there is, it is important to change the thoughts that are the underpinnings.